we, we curate products and, and the partner series has been a part or a big part of how we've, you know, moved to curating partners. And we are, I'm excited to have Logo Jojo here and um, Ellie. And Ellie, I remember from when I watched the common skew one, it's pronounced bathe. Did right. I say it right? All right. right. So I got that right. So we're off to a good start there. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I'm, I've always said, and Brett and I have talked about this, that I love the idea of coffee in our industry. And I think there's ways that it can be used, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, and, and, and that's what, you know, Rob's going to talk later in the, in the call here. He's the, he's the coffee guy. And uh, it's, it's a product that a lot of people are very loyal to a particular type, you know? And so when it came to promotional coffee, it was just kind of, I think people liked the idea, but they didn't really love the idea of sending out a relatively generic product. And um, what we're excited about is that this is a, it's a craft, qual, it's a high quality craft coffee product. And we've tried it. As I said, for those of you who just joined, we're drinking it right now. I think everybody on here should have gotten a sample box. Is that right? And hopefully, if, if you haven't already, you'll, you'll be able to try the product soon for yourself. And um, so. Did everybody uh, and then, get one? What's that? I was just wondering who got one. Did everybody get one? Diana did. Well, okay. Diana. Kevin, I think you'll get yours tomorrow. Who yes, is? I just tracked it. If you're you're Kevin, right? Yeah, you'll get it tomorrow. I just tracked it. UPS the, ground. The Kevin. Yeah, the Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then any of our customers and anyone else that watches this online, I think, I think you'd be excited to hear about this product. So, um, Ellie, with that, I want to turn it over to you, and then you know we'll we'll pop in with questions, and we'll we'll go from there. Well, first of all, thank you, Landon and Brett for, and Jennifer for letting us uh, present in front of you guys this morning. Um, just to start out, um, I used to be a distributor like Goodson. I owned my own company for 15 years and I just sold my interest in it last spring. And so I, I kind of know what the industry and I know what's out there. And I knew that there really wasn't any high end specialty coffee available. There was more a commodity type like Landon was saying the coffee that's you don't really know where it came from and you know it's sitting on a shelf somewhere and so rob my son well rob's my son too uh, <laughs> my son has been in the coffee business for several years and had been three a, three well that's several <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> yeah well um and so uh we after i sold my company decided to try the custom label coffee in the promo industry so i sell only Logo Jojo um, coffee through the uh, promo industry, but Rob is my vendor for the coffee. So the orders are placed through me, which is a, Logo Jojo is a supplier in the industry and Rob Folly Coffee is his company. He's the, um, the vendor for my coffee. And uh, the, di the difference being that it is a small batch. I'm gonna let Rob do the coffee spiel later because he knows way more about the, uh, uh, the actual coffee nerd details than I do. but. Um, I, I do have just, you know, I'm not really good at PowerPoint as I told it, these guys yesterday, I call it powerless point because that's how I feel when I do PowerPoint, but I'm going to, I'm going to share the screen here and show you a couple slides. So um, let's see. New, let's see, slideshow. There we go. So the, the story behind it is that Rob um, owns Folly Coffee. He sells retail. He's in, he's in grocery stores. He has a big online presence. And Jeff Mooney is actually who I work with a lot more than Rob. And maybe, Rob, you can tell him about Jeff. Yeah, um, Jeff's our head roaster. He's our director of coffee. And so I, I met Jeff. We launched in January of 2018 with the goal of... I became obsessed with specialty coffee for a few years before launching Folly just because I was fascinated about the range of flavor profiles you can get out of really great coffee and it's unlike anything I'd tasted. And so I launched in January of 2018 and quickly met Jeff who was working at one of our um, grocery stores that we were selling to. And he's asking all these really intense coffee questions every time I came in and eventually he goes, hey, how do I get into coffee? And I'm like, well, I need help packaging next week. So he started helping me package. Then he started tasting coffees with me on a weekly basis. And I'm, I'm, I like, I'm no slack when it comes to tasting coffees, but tasting coffee with him, I realized this guy's palate is 
leaps and bounds above what I'm able to taste and smell. And within the first year of joining me in Folly, he places 14th in the country as a coffee taster in the Cup Tasters Championship, which is this, it's a real thing, I promise. It's a national coffee tasting competition. Uh, he then later went on last year to become a certified Q grader, which is like the coffee equivalent of a wine sommelier. And then he took over our roasting program in April of last year when we moved our roasting to St. Louis Park, Minnesota, which is about 10 minutes west of Minneapolis. And so that we have a pretty intense hyper focus on what we do in the business that he's taken over all things coffee. And then I'm focus purely on kind of like the marketing, the sales, the branding and how to uh, the business end of Folly Coffee. And that's allowed us to grow in like a really effective way because he's been able to elevate the coffee program and what we're doing. And then I'm able to focus purely on like the business side of it and what we're doing on that side. So we can stay organized, but still roast a product that we're super, super happy with. And he's a, uh, yeah, he only continues to get better uh, at what he's doing. And it's, it's really exciting to see what he's done. And just, I mean, April will be one full year of having the coffee program. So it's pretty wild to think what we've been able to do in about seven or eight months. So they're the makers. I'm the mom. There you go. Um, and I know as um, I think in terms of marketing and, and uh, the use for the coffee, we offer um, co um, completely custom label, which is on the left, where you can take the label and customize it in whatever way you want. Um, you can co-brand it with Folly, which is shown on the right. We actually have templates available that are already co-branded that you just like the, the part above here, you can fill in whatever you want. The templates are white up here or else like you can see on the, the left, they, they do mention that it's classic Joe craft coffee. Um, words cannot express how much we appreciate your hard work. I mean, you can get pretty clever with it. Um, but the, the, um, the templates are all on our website, available for graphic designers to just download and, and go with it. So we make it pretty easy. Ellie, I was just going to jump in. I, you know, and I just want to reinforce for our customers. I mean, I think that the story, most of you know that I, I think I worked with my dad for 11 years. So part of their story that was interesting to me was just the, the family dynamic. And I, I, I find it, it, it's pretty cool. I think Rob, that you've, you know, created a product and then there's this synergistic way that your mom can you know work with you and do what she knows and is best at and you're able to do what you're best at and um my dad and i couldn't figure that out i got my own company and he has his and we hang out at christmas or whatever so so there you go but kudos to you guys and the other the other thing is i think everything rob just did i mean you can just see his passion for the product i think um the the, the quality and I, I think that's important and i talked to them about this yesterday you know, for me, for a coffee product to be interesting to our customers, I think it had to start with a high quality product be because of what people probably are used to drinking. And, um, and so I, I think everything he just kind of went through just scratches the surface with how committed they are to producing a quality product. And then you get to this point where Ellie is showing, you know, how the bags can be customized and, and the ability to do, like she's pointing out, a fully custom label, or if you want to promote you know, the product itself, the brand, the story, then you can co-brand with the ones on the right here. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, and then we'll get into talking about, sorry, Rob, uh, we'll, we'll get into talking about some other opportunities and some ways to use this stuff. But yeah, and we, we were talking about this yesterday as we were kind of ironically trying to figure out the technical side of it. Uh, but <laughs> I was getting requests before logo Jojo started for these types of orders. And it seems simple in theory that, hey, we just want co-branded things. We want this many units. And it's really hard to say no to especially large orders as a small business. But then I realized, well, OK, I have to source the bags for it. I have to source the labels for it. I need someone to design the labels. I need to know what they want. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, this is an entirely separate thing. Thing. And so I had to make kind of the tough decision early on that we just we don't do this because it's it's outside of the scope of what I'm comfortable doing. And I'm pretty particular in anything I put my name on or put the folly name on. And so we just early on decided this is just not something we're going to do because I don't think we can do it at a high level. And so when my mom sold off her portion in her business in the promotional products industry and approached me with this, it was that moment where you're like, all right, working with my mom, this is something I should be uh, very cognizant of as I'm deciding if this is a good idea. But then you look into the industry and you see that the current offerings for coffee, I'm kind of a coffee nerd. And I was looking at, it, I go, I don't even know what I'd be drinking if I did order this. And so the thing about the co-branding is 
it's an opportunity for somebody to be able to have their brand on it, but also be able to look into what is classic Joe, what is folly and realize that the beans they're drinking are of a quality that's like a the next level above what I think most people are used to, you know, your, your chain coffee, your uh, really dark roasted coffee, you're going to get a lot of those bitter, uh, bitter profile on that coffee versus what we're roasting really intentionally to bring out like complex flavors. And so it's this unique opportunity that you have her 15 years experience doing all the things that I was not comfortable doing on our own to have to say no to this combined with our hyper focus on the coffee where it was like, okay. And then the last part was like, okay, mom, Jeff is your contact at Bali coffee, (laughs) anything ordering or process related goes through Jeff and I'll be over here. If you need me. I, I, I copy Rob on emails and that's about all I have to do. I, I, I work directly with Jeff, not so much with Rob and so far so good. Right. (laughs) I think that the one thing I would say is it is Rob, I've, you know, I say all the time, our industry on the surface, whether it's coffee or coffee cups or pens or whatever it is, seems so simple. It's just a pen with a logo. You know, how yeah. hard is that? And Ellie knows from her past, uh, you know, is it, there's just like 45 pieces of information that have to be done properly to get the pen done right, you know, from color to whatever. And and that's what we do. I mean, that's not, that's not complaining. That's just what we're here to do. That's why people hire us is to, is to, is to get that done right. And, um, you know, so in, in like around here, um, there are some coffee brands around here that people on this call would be familiar with. And I know that if you're buying enough coffee or if you're a distillery and you want to do some special roasted coffee in a bar- bourbon barrel or something, you can get them to do it. Um, but beyond that, there wasn't, there really wasn't anybody in town here with known coffee brands that was that really, cause I think they're experiencing it the same way you did, Rob. They're like, yeah, it sounds great, but I'd have to basically retool my entire company to be able to do it. So Um, Well, and can I just say, Landon, too, that since I started Logo Jojo, I've worked with a lot of distributors and talked to a ton of distributors and done research on kind of who our target market is. And Goodson Supply, when we connected, um, just to sing their praises a little bit, these guys get it. I mean, there's so many distributors out there that are order takers. Yeah, Landon's like, keep it coming, keep it coming. Um, there's so many distributors that'll hand you a catalog or send you to a website and say, okay, how many of these do you want to order? Send me your art file for your logo. And these guys are much more strategic. They're all about brand messaging and, you know, what, what is, what are you trying to accomplish with the product? What, what, you know, what's the message you're trying to send to the end user? And so the end user gets something crappy. I mean, what kind of message is that sending? You know, like when it always killed me when I'd get like an email from a client that says, we want to give um, a birth or a, a holiday gift to our employees. We have a budget of $5 a person. And you're like, oh, well, that sends a really nice message. So anyway, um, these guys are pros. And um, I think you guys have really done a good job in terms of partnering with them because they know they know what they're doing. So anyway, that's my commercial for Goodson. But I just we appreciate it. it. We yeah. appreciate it. Checks yeah. in the mail. Yeah, checks in the mail. Well, give me some orders. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> OK. Um, and then just for fun, I threw in a couple slides that um, these are some of the reasons that people have been using our coffee. The, the coffee that Landon just um, held up was a pre-conference um, kit that went out to 525 um, participants that were attending a virtual conference. And the cool thing about that is I think I mentioned how much, um, how much mileage that kit itself got on social media. I mean, people were posting, you know, there was a blanket there was with it. There were people, I mean, the coffee, I sent them to Rob every time I saw them. Um, there were people drinking coffee on their deck with the pouch and they would tag our company and Folly Coffee and the conference and the, you know, it it was, it was amazing. So, um, but then we also um, provide on our website and Landon can, can help you with this too, some kind of goofy taglines that a lot of people have been using, you know, welcome to our virtual conference. Let's get to perk rise and grind team. Let's brew it. You know, we've, people are doing a lot of um, work from home kits sent to people, um, employee recognition type stuff to keep you perking at home while working from home. You're doing a magnificent job. You might match it with a, with a piece of drinkware. Um, And then this is, well, this is the, the pre-conference swag. This is just somebody, something that someone posted. I mean, somebody went to the trouble of staging it like that and then tagged 
the company that did the the nuts and tagged us and i mean it was pretty pretty amazing so, so i would jump in and just say like so to me the logical progression you know is if we if we have a quality product which we do and and, and you guys try it and you agree with it you know then the next thing is okay what are the use cases you know how, how do we use it to further yeah. our objectives as a company you know you know karen kevin leah all of you guys you know diane it's like, you know, we're, you're doing, everybody's doing the same thing. You know, we're trying to keep and grow the customers we have. We're trying to get new ones. And we're also trying to build some sort of culture with the employees that we have. And especially now that we're in this environment where a lot of people are working from home, not only internal people, but, you know, our customers. And, and so, you know, how do we use it to further our objectives? You know, she, she just gave a lot of examples of, you know, kind of cute phrases and ways to be creative with it. And then there's other just more straightforward objectives that we can, we can do where it's just like, look, we're sending you, we know you're at home, uh, whether you're a customer or an employee, we know that you probably drink coffee. And the other thing I mentioned to them yesterday was, I know when I encountered coffee for the first time in bean form, I had never ground coffee. And um, I had always just drank ground coffee. And, you know, Ellie, I think talks a little bit about that here in a second. And we'll, and we'll talk about, you know, some suggestions there. But that's the other thing I would just mention is I like from the product, moving on from the product, I like the fact that we have a quality product with, that we can start to help our customers kind of maybe introduce some coffee culture to, to their customers and employees. And, you know, who knows, maybe we introduce somebody to the possibility of grinding coffee for the first time or trying to pour over for the first time. And um, I think those are the things that become pretty sticky for customers, employees is, you know, when they get a gift that creates an experience. So go ahead. And, the, and coffee as a promotional product is kind of a unique thing because I think a lot of promotional products you get, especially if it's something consumable, you're probably eating it in one go and you go, oh, that was nice. I kind of remember that thing. Whereas coffee, a, a 12 ounce bag of coffee, I mean, for me, it may not last three weeks, but for the average person, it's going to last about three weeks. And so if you've got something that you want to be the first thing that somebody sees every morning before they start their day, it can be used for like a monthly messaging. It can just be used for new branding, anything that you're trying to communicate. It's kind of this unique product that you can have something that somebody's going to look at first thing in the morning. It's going to be kind of a daily reminder versus a lot of things. I think you see once you go, Oh, this was nice that they did this. And then it's kind of done probably goes in the trash. And that's kind of a fun part about coffee versus like, uh, we were talking yesterday that I go, if you're trying to like, Oh, we've got 10 to $15. Uh, let's get people a bottle of wine. You're going to get probably an okay bottle of wine. And if you're like, I don't know how everyone here consumes wine, but it's probably gone in one night uh, versus the coffee. If you're spending 10 to $15 on a bag of coffee, that's going to be a great bag of coffee. That's going to make bitter free. Like it's got nice tasting notes, some complexity to it, and it's going to be there for the duration of that bag. So it makes it kind of a unique opportunity to be able to get something in front of people, especially as they're working from home or any sort of like conferences or anything that's happening. Like SKUCon's a great example that I think the reason it got this traction of people taking pictures is because they're looking at it every day that SKUCon is happening, even though it's a virtual event this year. Um, well, and the other thing in terms of trends, since COVID, the whole home barista thing has exploded. And there are more and more people that want to learn how to make a really good cup of coffee. And they're learning that if you grind it right before you brew it, it's way better. And um, so that's something to keep in mind too, that, you know, it, it is a trend to, um, and, you know, people are willing to spend a little more to have a really good cup of coffee at home. I have a question. Is yeah. it okay to ask? Okay. Um, so for the industry I'm in, we do a lot of like virtual conferences or, or webinars and something that has become popular is like a lesson on something that's kind of outside the thing we're promoting. So for example, we did, um, we did a beer tasting lesson with a professional beer taster and we told them what beers to go out and get and whatever. So I'm wondering if this is something we could do and if you guys have like your, your master roaster, would he give like a 15 minute talk on how to enjoy high quality coffee? And 
kind of make it a whole thing? Or is that not really something you're doing? Yeah, I think there's two ways to go about that. You can do that live for sure. And we've done things like this in the past with customers. I'm in person usually <laughs> if it's in Minnesota, but we have done a couple of virtual things like this. Uh, there's also the potential of doing like a personalized recorded video. Uh, that's another great option too. So that way, all the technical things we're talking about here, are, oh, did people make the call or not that we have a pre-recorded video that we could send that would time up that would be the same thing or at least more personalized that, hey, this is the coffee you have. Here's how we recommend uh, that. But that both options are something that we have done. And I think is a, is a great way to kind of take that connection to the next level of what they are drinking. And Folly Coffee does have a YouTube channel and there are a lot of tutorial kind of things on there. There's a lot that's just kind of for the fun of it. And a lot of, he, Rob has a uh, podcast, Folly Coffee po podcast that's on there too but he has created a lot of online content that's informational that um, you can, you might want to check out too. But yeah, you're open to I, it, right? Just, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I love that idea, Leah. I mean, and I, I love the idea of like, again, I think, you know, transcending a product to an experience or two. Um, and even if it's, I mean, I love that idea. I also love the idea of like, if you send coffee out, then, you know, now all of a sudden, and you know, marketing people are on this call. Now all of a sudden you've got some content opportunities where it's like, Hey, how do I do a pour over? Or I just posted a link to the Cuisinart grind and brew that we have in the office here. And, you know, so it's like, you know, Oh, Hey, by the way, if you never ground the coffee that we sent you, here's a great $79 or $80, you know, grinder. I mentioned to Rob yesterday asking for some guidance. I think Rob and Ellie use like Bodum is a brand of grinder that you can get a Rob. I think Rob mentioned that he just uses like a relatively affordable Walmart grinder. I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be anything crazy, right? Well, I have to say I have the same grinder as you, um, Landon, a Cuisinart here in the office. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might want to up your game on the grinder because I really need to do the same thing. But anyway, here's, here's an example of a, of a pouch that we did um, for employee recognition working from home. Words can espresso, how much we appreciate your hard work. This is for a bank. And it's co-branded, but it's not, um, you know, they have that it's classic Joe, but, um, you know, you, you can't really tell that it's folly, but, you know, we're open to whatever. So, and then customer appreciation. Th these are just a few more um, puns. Thanks for being such a loyal customer. Doing business with you is a brutal thing. Um, for nonprofits, you know, thanks a latte for all you brew for us. Anyway, these are just taglines that are fun that you can use if you want. And like, here's a, this is a financial services firm that took the, um, the tagline and ran with it. So, and then they do have it co-branded Folly, Class, Folly Classic Joe Craft Coffee. Hey, Ellie, I'm curious. Have you had anybody, Jen made a great point, a scannable code and Jen, jump in, jump in here if you want to explain what you meant, but yeah. um, um, I was just, as we were talking about the label and even the YouTube channel and ways to inter make it more interactive, um, we do a lot of print um, for labels in different, in, in different scenarios and adding that scannable QR code um, now that you don't have to have an additional app to, to um, get to the yeah. website directly. You just hover your camera over it and you get to a, a website. That would be another way that you could use this for generating new leads or getting someone to additional content to learn about. I think the idea of how it was made and what that process is would be a really cool way to just additionally share um, the process with people to create more loyalty to you know what happens behind the scenes. I love that. Yeah, the second I saw that the iPhone was switching their camera to automatically read it, I was like, all right, we're in the game of QR codes now. So anytime we send out mailers or anything, we have QR codes linking to our page, linking to our website, especially now that most menus are QR codes at restaurants, like that's becoming a part of kind of a daily routine. And it's most people know how to do it now. So that's definitely something we've done in the past that people really respond to, which is awesome. Ellie, and, and I may be jumping ahead of you here, so I apologize if I am, but you and Rob were talking a little bit about the Mirror brand yesterday, and then you were also talking about that um, kind of pour-over contraption that, that Mirror is offering. I know it's it's a pretty expensive product, so I don't know how that will go over, but I was just curious if you want to mention something on that. Well, Mirror, it's M-I-I-R, and it's a, it's a high-end retail brand, and uh, one of our suppliers in the industry, Gemline, offers it. 
And uh, when I was kind of researching the industry to find what drinkware to recommend to go uh, with Folly, to kit with Folly, I talked to Rob about Mir and, and he highly recommends it. It's, um, there's a give back component to it. Um, if you go to their website, it can explain um, more about that. But talking about QR codes, they, they have a product and the port, I have it right here. And you know, maybe maybe Landon, you should send this out as a follow up um, about the porigami. The yeah, I um, just actually and I just actually posted a link to the chat okay. for like to to Jim Line and the products they offer from Mirror. Yeah, and so um, they have a they have a product that's actually you can it comes flat, but you assemble it and use it for a, a cone for pour over coffee, and it's just it's I saw the um, CEO of Mirror interviewed a couple days ago, and he said by far this is his favorite new product from um, from 2020. So and it's it's just. And it's got a QR code that actually takes you to a tutorial on how to do pour over coffee. So that's something we could do very easily. Now, admittedly, um, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around 30 bucks for that thing. Um, oh, it's really, it's, this is not a promotional <laughs> product. This is a gift. It's, it's yeah. really heavy gauge metal. It certainly, I mean, yeah, it certainly would Plus be. it's, you know, they have such a sense of design at Mir. you know, they're just a, a cut above um, so many kind of cookie cutter drinkware companies out there. And again, they have the give back component where um, they donate a portion to um, clean water efforts worldwide. So um, that's becoming a lot more important to, to customers too. So, um, but customer appreciation, this is one we did over the holidays that they did the Zoom collage, which is kind of a fun thing from our quarantine to yours. And then this was one we did for a nonprofit um, for the prevention of homeless, home, homelessness. They had a, a drive-in parking lot um, fundraiser and handed this out to everybody through the windows of the car. And then this, this is, <laughs> I throw this in there because this is Rob's big brother's wedding. We did these for our favors for, for the wedding that was a small backyard wedding in October that was supposed to be a big one, but that's another story. Rob, you said it was pretty warm for that wedding. Yeah, it was great. We had the, uh, it was really cool that October in Minnesota, you don't know if it's going to be like the Halloween of 91 where there's three feet of snow or if it's going to be 70 all the way through. And about two days before the wedding, it hit like a historic low, I think of like 15 in October. Yeah. Uh, and it warmed up to about 25. And so the pictures looked really good, but um, fought off a mild case of hypothermia while on the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So I'm curious, um, clients on the call, like, you know, did anybody try the coffee yet? I just got a grinder, um, which leads me to a question. Do you guys sell any ground coffee? We do. We'll grind it. We It's 25 cents on a G um, for an, um, per pouch to, uh, to grind it. And just because it takes a little bit more labor, but um, we're selling way more beans than we are ground, but we will grind it. Uh, I'm just wondering about, you know, like survival kits for some of our clients, you know, if we're going to execute a really big IT project where they might be staying up late or doing things after hours. Um, I don't want to assume that their office or wherever they have a grinder. Yeah, no, we'll uh, grind it. Yeah, and I, I think that, again, speaks to use case. And that's kind of, um, yeah. So nobody... Nobody has yet tried the, the coffee. That's good. I'm excited. So now we have a reason to follow up with every <laughs> single one of you. But I did, I did get an espresso maker for Christmas, so I will be. The espresso is my favorite. I will say that. Yeah. So well, I, I think for me, the most compelling thing it is, so this is called the third wave style of coffee. This is what got me obsessed about specialty coffee. So in the U S there's kind of three major waves. First wave is tin can coffee, gas stations, Starbucks comes along in the 80s, creates the second wave of coffee. This is the first time anything that's even specialty grade is being served in the U.S. And then the third wave of coffee comes in kind of the early 2000s when roasters begin sourcing better coffees and roasting them lighter. And by roasting them lighter, you're bringing out the flavors of the coffee itself. I kind of compare it to if you had a perfectly cooked hamburger and then you just continue to cook it until it gets really dark and burnt. That's kind of what a really dark roasted coffee is. And the predominant flavor you're going to get out of that is <laughs> that bitter, burnt, dry profile. And so 
the first thing I hear people say about our coffees, if they've never had kind of a higher end style of coffee is just, oh, this isn't bitter. And that's exactly what we want. And so the classic Joe that you all got, um, Logo Jojo, we picked two of our coffees. One is called uh, the Classic Joe. The other is our espresso. That's called the SOB Espresso, which, of course, stands for Single Origin Blend, as I'm sure everybody assumed. Um, And the Classic Joe, I kind of call the crowd pleaser. Uh, We look for coffees with a nutty, chocolatey profile. So it ends up being a lot of South American coffees. Uh, We're working primarily with the Danilo Barbosa farm in uh, out of Brazil because it's just nutty chocolatey it's kind of that classic profile but then in the finish you're not going to get that harshness it's going to have a really nice smooth clean finish and so I'm hoping when you all get a chance to try it for the first time that that's what you notice and uh, that's why it's kind of nice to have these coffees available uh, for a a wider audience of people when you're trying to kind of um, uh, provide large packages with a large number of people it's kind of hard to pick a flavor profile that I think everybody will be happy with. And these are the two coffees that I think because it's approachable, it's drinkable. Uh, it, it is one of those coffees that very rarely do I get someone saying, I just don't, it, except for the, there's this weird population of people that's like, I like that. This isn't bitter enough for me. And I'm like, all right, we probably shouldn't hang out. I, I can't stand Starbucks coffee. Um, <laughs> you guys do, um, like ultra caffeinated, kind of like the Death Wish coffee. That's super popular amongst the IT personnel. Yeah, we, we don't. So um, coffees that tend to be the highly caffeinated coffees use a large portion, if not 100%, what's called Robusta coffee or Robusta, depending on how you pronounce it. There's two major families of coffee, the Robusta family and the Arabica family. So I'm sure everyone's heard the term Arabica. Starbucks made that really popular, but that that is the higher quality of coffee that has the better flavor profile, and it is naturally lower caffeine. And the thing about Robusta coffee or Robusta is that it kind of tastes like uh, burnt rubber when you roast it. And so typically these higher caffeinated companies will try to use as much as possible without it tasting like you just did a burnout in a parking lot. Um, If you can kind of picture that aroma, that's kind of what you get out of those coffees. So uh, we don't kind of dabble into that because our goal as a a roaster is to bring out the best flavor possible, uh, as opposed to those that side of it is like more about the functionality. And so we're really going for the best tasting cup that you can get. Um, So I had a question. So these are like freshly made, essentially. And I know you said you expect a bag of of this to last like three weeks. No, that's the four ounce. The, the 12 ounce will last about. Oh, okay. Three. But that's so four ounce. that's assuming that they're keeping it in this bag and it would still be. So three, we- three weeks or- would be, th- that's the answer. If I'm talking to someone that's like, I need this to be perfect. I'm going to be taking notes on it. I'm going to log this into my coffee profile about this new coffee I've tasted. Uh, We do nitrogen flush them. So they do stay really fresh for up to six months. And we recommend that's after it's open that you've consumed it within a few weeks because if we did like a big order, I could hang on to some of them for like up to six months without really worrying about exactly the degradation of flavor. Okay. Yeah. The two major enemies to freshness in coffee are oxygen and light. It's why you don't see clear coffee bags. And that's why we nitrogen flush all of our coffee bags. Cause this machine we have essentially sucks out the oxygen from the coffee bag, replaces it with nitrogen. And so it's living in an oxygen free environment. And so once you open it, we recommend that it's drank within three weeks because that's when oxygen is being exposed to the beans. Uh, and that's kind of the, three weeks is kind of when the flavor starts to die off from oxidation. Uh, but I think anything within six months, we're finding really good success with this new nitrogen flusher we have. Same goes for a ground coffee. Yes. Okay. And it's good. Yeah. It, it, and it's not from, a, this is the, the coffee nerd side of me where it's like, it's not from a safety aspect. It's more just like, when will it taste the absolute best ground coffee will uh, lose some of that flavor quicker once it's exposed to oxygen. Because if you picture a coffee bean being it, like more oxygen's area. only exposed to the outside of it versus when it's ground, it's hitting every single internal part of that bean. Sure. Okay. That sounds good. Great, great questions, Leah. And the other thing I was going to say is that it reminds me, Ellie, and I don't know if we mentioned this, so I apologize if we did, that the way you work, and maybe we could just touch on lead time and stuff is you guys, you do wrote. So while we just addressed really important questions about the life of the product, you guys get the order and you roast when you get the order. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. They, they, there, there's no roasted beans over at Folly just sitting on a shelf. They, the only re- reason they ever have beans that are already roasted is because somebody already ordered the coffee. It's, it's not roast, it's roast to order basically. So the turnaround time is probably 10 to 15 working days. 
the label is what takes most of the time to get the art and the proof approved and and um, it's a food grade label and so um, it's the same label that's on the samples that you guys got so and to contextualize yeah, that just a little bit when you say 10 to 15 days what we're talking about is proofing and production production right 10 to 15 days and ship time which most likely with you guys being in Minnesota it's is going to be two to three days yeah three days max wherever it's going so if I wanted to do like an event I would probably want to give you like almost a month heads up but you know two weeks before can I give you like the, the accounts and stuff like that yeah it sounds I mean, to me like it's I would say three to four weeks it like four weeks sounds to me Leah like it would probably be about worst case unless we're at a really busy time is that well, and part of the issue is you can't depend on shipping times anymore. I mean, you know, it, when, when they say, I, I mean, I've shipped some things overnight that have been taking five days that just, you know, they're just, I think it's, it's better now that it's not the holidays, but you just want to pad it a little bit in terms of your in-hand state because of the shipping um, uncertainties. But, and I would say the vast majority of the time we get the, the orders out within 10 days. Okay. Um, if what's like the minimum amount we can order? 48. 48 12 ounce bags or mm -hmm. okay. Is, four, that, four is ounce that the same bags. for four ounce? Same, yeah, same yeah. for four ounce too. Oh, just 48 bags. <clears throat> okay. Yep. What's the largest size bag that you have? 12 ounce, which is which is the retail size that you'll see most of the time in a grocery store, right, Rob? Like yeah. mo most coffee beans are in 12 ounce bags and, and karen just to give you some context like this is the 12 ounce bag that i'm holding just to give you some idea of like proportional size or whatever yeah so how many cups can come out of that bag do you know rob oh you, yeah you um so depending on the size cup you use the standard is kind of like eight ounce so it's, it'll be anywhere between like 20 to 25 cups out of that bag so that's why i say kind of like that's a i, I look at it as a 12 ounce bag is like a three week supply of coffee if you're doing a cup a day well and the nice thing too <clears throat> is like that skewcon bag that was a 12 ounce bag so the conference was last week people are still posting right. about drinking it because it's still around you know the, the four ounce is uh i mean how many cups is that rob it's it'd be a third a third seven eight cups yeah seven to eight so um you could just, just get more mileage out of it i think i'm going to start having leah co-host the partner series because she always helps us with a lot of great questions <laughs> well, um, I, there, I, actually, I have to drop <laughs> off but i'm very interested in this and i'm very interested in having an expert panel for like a thing but i have to go thank you very Thanks, much leah we'll see you yeah I know that we've come up against it on time. So, so I want to go ahead and, and, and wrap up so everybody can get going. Um, does anybody have any questions before we, before we jump off here? Um, I have one question because it's not every day that I have um, experts in, in coffee and I'm a huge coffee fan. Like my husband and I are crazy about coffee and we do a lot of um, backcountry trips. Um, and when you were saying you're in Minnesota, that's the area that we usually go. Well, most years we go up into Quitico, if you're familiar with uh, Boundary Waters and beyond. Um, but one of the things that we always run into is that we really can't find, because we want great coffee while we're, you know, in the, in the Northwoods as well. Is there, um, do you have a suggestion like for, because you know, we have like those little instant packets that are a brand I won't even name. It's embarrassing. But what do you have any suggestions for that? You do a travel. This travels well. That's what that does. Okay. It's, it's flat. Yeah. The, the difficulty in, in traveling is, is your source of hot water, right? And so I actually really like cold brew, especially if you're hiking in the summer. That's true. Cold brew is an awesome one that um, you can literally just have a plastic jar, like a 16 ounce plastic jar, and you do like 100 grams of coffee. And as you're hiking, the agitation of the coffee in the water, it's going to just naturally brew, cold brew over like you need about 12 hours for it to come up to full strength and so if just the day before or whenever you just have a few of those in your backpack then each morning it's it's going to be you know warmish temperature but if you want something that's just like a great uh, level of coffee that that's a great way to do it um and then the other thing is this is a little more involved but what you can do is if you have a way to heat your water you can literally fill a tea bag with about 20 grams of coffee per like 12 ounces of water and then just steep it 
in hot water is an interesting way to be able to brew coffee while you're camping. There's all these kind of like little hacks of like, how do you use great coffee when doing it? That's a really fun way to do it is if you have hot water, I mean, really, that's almost like a French press, but instead of French, uh, instead of filtering it out with the press, you're filtering it out with a tea bag. And so you, you can use that. And so, well, um, yeah, there's empty tea yeah. bags called tea pockets yeah. that you can put coffee or, or tea in or whatever. And, you know, one thing that we should point out too, is the SOB espresso, there's no such thing as espresso. Um, I mean, espresso is not a bean. Espresso is a brewing method and people don't really realize that. And Rob's SOB espresso is really good with cold brew. And Robbie, you correct me if I'm wrong. Cause a lot of this, I didn't know a year ago. I'm learning yeah. as I'm going. But... No, that's a great explanation. Yeah. Espresso. Anybody that says this is an espresso bean, that's more, we have roasted this in a way that it works really well with espresso, but that's probably my favorite one that we have to do as a French press to do as cold brew. The, the other comment I was gonna make along these lines, and we mentioned this, I mean, a lot of people are K cup people like, you know, diehard Keurig people and they do make a little mini filter basically right like yeah, a reusable k cup yeah so you can still do like a you know a bean you know a coffee that starts as a bean that you grind you can still use a keurig because they make the little miniature you know coffee filter thing so um a little extra work but probably worth it so um well hey i want to let everyone get back to their day and um jen as always thanks for hosting i i, I need to do a better job of of giving Jen a plug. Jen is with Live Fire uh, here in Louisville and, and she helps us out with our marketing and we appreciate that. And and Ellie and Rob, thank you so much for your time and, and we're excited to work with you guys on some things. And obviously our customers, I mean, I always say, and I've said it many times, you know, we appreciate every order that you send us and we hope you feel that way about it. And especially the last year, we appreciate, we always appreciated it before, but everyone, especially in the last year is a, a little bit more. So, um, and we look forward to following up with you guys and seeing how we can make use of, of this product. And you'll be hearing about our February series soon. So everybody have a great day. Thank awesome. you very Thank much, you everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.